welcome to the Hobart Operator Training Video for the FT900 Series Wear Washers. This video is a supplement to your manual. If you have any questions, refer to the manual. The FT900 Flight Type Wear Washer is the most popular wear washer in the industry. Equipped with standard features such as Hobart's advanced OptiRinse technology system, insulated hinge doors, and microprocessor controls, not only is the FT900 popular, but it is also the most energy and water efficient choice as well. Familiarize yourself with the main components for the wash system. Your machine setup may vary from those shown. The load end, the pre-wash, the power wash, power rinse and final rinse area, the control box, and unload end. To begin operation, first check to make sure all components are in their proper operating positions. Pump intake screens must be put on holders at each pump intake. Strainer pans must be in place on top of each tank. Strainer baskets must be in place in strainer pans. End caps must be correctly installed at ends of all wash arms. Wash arms must be properly installed and latched in place. The flush arm at load end must be properly installed. The final rinse arm and dual rinse arm when present must be properly installed. Curtains and drain back pans must be in their proper places. Refer to the diagram in your manual for your specific model. Before using the washer, assure proper water hardness, all water and steam valves must be open and the electric supply turned on before the machine will function. Close all drain levers and doors. The drain levers are located near the floor at the front of each tank. Rotate drain levers clockwise to the vertical position. Press the power key on the keypad located on the lid of the control box. The display will light up. If the doors are not closed, door open will be displayed. If all doors are closed, Tank filling will be displayed and the tanks will begin to fill. All tanks will be full in approximately 10 to 15 minutes. Note, opening a door during the fill cycle shuts off the fill valves and door open displays. Close the door to resume the fill cycle. When all tanks are full, the fill valves will automatically shut off and the water temperatures will display for each tank. The full-time auto-fill feature adds water to the tanks to maintain proper water levels during operation. If the water level drops below the lower float in any tank, the heat shuts off until the water level is above the lower float. To begin dishwashing, start the motors for the conveyor, pumps, and blower dryer by pressing the green start switch located at either the load or unload end of the machine or on the control box. The machine will operate only if the tanks have filled to the proper level and all doors are closed. All tank temperatures display when the machine is in operation. When wear reaches the rinse zone, the final rinse water temperature will display. Look for a key to display names in your manual. If wear reaches the unload end of the machine and trips the dish limit switch, the conveyor and final rinse will shut off. The display will alternate between the tank temperatures and unload dishes. After the wear is removed and the dish limit switch resets, normal operation resumes. If no wear enters the machine for a preset amount of time, the auto timer automatically shuts off the machine. The tanks continue to heat and the temperatures display. To resume operation, press the green start switch. Note. The auto timer shutoff setting can be adjusted by your Hobart service technicians. The range is from 1 to 12 minutes. The default time is set at the factory. Pre-scrap dishes thoroughly to remove large food particles and debris. Never use steel wool and wear to be loaded into the dishwashing machine. This could introduce surface corrosion, which could eventually interfere with machine operation. 
All plates, saucers, trays, etc. should be loaded on the conveyor in an inclined position. Bowls should be loaded upside down. Silverware must be washed in racks to prevent the loss of items unless the optional silverware conveyor is used. Failure to do so could cause the conveyor to jam and damage ware or machine components. Do not attempt to wash large items such as pots, pans, and trays without first checking to make sure they will fit through the machine opening. Such items must not be washed in this dishwasher unless they will easily pass through it. Do not allow foreign objects to enter the unit, especially metallic contaminants. Remove dishes from the conveyor. Unload the conveyor starting with the wear furthest from the trip arm. Remove the dish that is striking the trip arm last. The machine automatically restarts. The water temperatures in the tanks and rinse arms are monitored electronically and are displayed on the control box keypad display. The display should be checked periodically to assure that proper temperatures are being maintained. Note, refer to the hot water sanitizing label on the right side of the control box for minimum temperature settings. The dishwasher is equipped with electronic digital controls. Some of these functions are programmable to suit the needs of your kitchen operation. All programming is performed through the on-screen menu using the Up, Down, Menu, and Start Enter keys located on the keypad. Note the parameters can be changed at any time the display is active, whether the machine is operating or in idle mode. To enter the parameters menu, press the Menu key from the main screen. You will be prompted on screen asking if you wish to exit the menu. Press the up or down key repeatedly until you reach the enter security code screen. Note, the manager code is necessary for entering the parameters menu. If the code is lost or forgotten, it can be reset by Hobart service. Press the enter key to indicate that you want to enter the code. You will now be prompted with security code on the top line and a single digit and three asterisks on the bottom line. Use the up and down keys to change the digit of the security code to the appropriate value. Note, the default code is listed in the operator training manual. The code may be changed, however the new code should be stored in a safe place. Press the Enter key to move to the next digit to the right. Repeat these steps for each digit. After pressing Enter on the fourth digit, you will immediately return to the Enter Security Code screen. The letter M will appear in the lower left corner of the display. Press the up or down keys repeatedly until you reach the Edit Parameters screen. Press the Enter key. Hobart believes that the default settings that leave the factory are suitable for the majority of kitchen operations. However, there are cases where kitchen managers may find the need to change one or more options. The parameters menu allows these changes. For a complete list, refer to your operator's manual. The dishwasher must be thoroughly cleaned at the end of each working shift or after each meal. Push the power key on the keypad to turn the machine off. Warning, disconnect electrical power supply and follow lockout tagout procedures before you begin cleaning. Open all front access doors. Drain the machine by rotating the drain levers counterclockwise to a horizontal position. Draining the tanks requires approximately 5 to 10 minutes. Remove the curtains. Clean the interior and all tank shelves using a food hose with spray nozzle. Flush all debris toward the strainers. Remove the wash arms by first releasing the latches. Slide the upper arms forward, swinging the front of the arm down. Slide the lower arms forward, 
Tilt the front of the arms upward to allow water to drain. Remove the arms. Remove the end caps. Remove the flush arm at the load end of the machine. Remove the end cap. Remove the strainer baskets and strainer pans. Also, remove the dual rinse strainer if present. Empty strainers in a trash receptacle or food waste disposer. Do not strike strainer pans or strainer baskets on solid objects to dislodge debris. When the tanks are empty, remove pump intake screens. Remove, clean, and replace the strainers from the drain back pans in the power rinse and or wash sections where present. Refer to your manual for diagrams. Clean rinse arms according to instructions in your manual. Do not attempt to clean OptiRinse nozzles. OptiRinse nozzles should be replaced if they become clogged or if the spray pattern is ineffective. Never use steel wool to clean wear washer surfaces. Use only products formulated to be safe with stainless steel. Flush tanks with a water hose, removing any accumulations of food soil. Clean the curtains, wash arms, flush arms, nozzles, strainer pans, strainer baskets, and pump intake screens in a sink. Reinstall all end caps, but do not over tighten. Reinstall all arms in their proper location and orientation. The flush arm nozzles must point horizontally toward the pre wash tank. The upper arm nozzles point downward and the lower arm nozzles point upward. Arms in the pre-wash chamber each have two tubes with a slightly longer arm going below. The arms with five tubes fit in the upper brackets and the arms with four tubes fit in the lower brackets. Replace the pump intake screens, strainer pans, and strainer baskets. Clean the machine exterior like any other stainless steel appliance. Use a damp cloth and mild soapy water. Flush the openings where the sensors are located at the load end of the machine. Do not attempt to clean these openings with any metallic object as damage to the sensors can occur. Leave the machine doors open to allow the interior to air out and dry. Refer to your manual for additional periodic cleaning. following is a list of do's and don'ts for your Hobart dishwasher. Do assure proper water hardness of three grains or less per gallon. Do use only detergents recommended by your chemical professional. Do at the end of the day thoroughly cleanse the machine, rinse and dry with the doors open. Do closely follow your chemical professional's prescribed deliming schedule. Do use only products formulated to be safe on stainless steel. Do not over soften water. Do not use detergents formulated for residential dishwashers. Do not allow food solids to accumulate on the tank bottom. Do not exceed chemical manufacturers recommended concentrations for detergent, rinse aid, or lime scale remover. Do not use steel wool to clean wear or dishwasher surface. Do not allow foreign objects to enter the unit, especially metallic contaminants. Note, failure to follow use, care, and maintenance instructions may void your Hobart dishwasher warranty. Warning. Disconnect electrical power supply and follow lockout tagout procedures before performing any maintenance procedure. Refer to your operator's manual for routine maintenance procedures for your FT900 wear washer. Periodically, you may run into a problem with the machine. Knowing where possible problems occur is key to solving them. If the dishes are not clean, then check for a cause. Possible reasons include insufficient wash water due to drain obstruction, preventing proper drain closing, missing end plug from wash arm, wash arm nozzle obstruction. Spotted silverware, glasses, and dishes 
can be caused by improperly loaded racks or incorrect final rinse water temperature. If the machine will not fill or is slow to fill, make sure that the doors are closed. A complete list of troubleshooting symptoms and causes are listed in your operator's manual. If symptoms persist after possible causes have been checked, contact your local Hobart service office. This concludes the operator training video on your Hobart FT900 flight type wear wash machine. Contact your local Hobart office for any repairs or adjustments needed on this equipment.